Hi everyone, it's a new video from ExtraMat. Today we will evaluate the integral i involving the golden ratio, where i equals to integral from 0 to plus infinity of 1 over 1 plus x power 5 all to power 5 dx. We will use three different methods to integrate i. Method number one. We will use the change of variable x to power phi equals to tangent square theta. So x equals to tangent to the power 2 over phi of theta. Now dx equals to derivative of this term d theta, which is 2 over phi multiplied by tangent to the power this term minus 1, which is 2 over 5 minus 1 of theta, multiplied by derivative of tangent theta, which is secant squared theta d theta. For the new bounds, we have the lower bound of the integral is x equals to 0. Here we have the lower bound x equals to 0, and the upper bound x equals to plus infinity. So for x equals to 0, we will get tangent theta equals to zero, and so theta equals to zero. For the upper bound, x equals to plus infinity, and we know that tangent of pi over two is plus infinity. And so we will have theta equals to pi over two. Now substituting an i, we get, here the bounds are from zero to plus infinity, and we will get the new bounds from zero to pi over two. Here, instead of x to the power phi, here we will put tangent square theta, and then dx equals to two over phi, etc. So, pi becomes integral from zero to pi over two, one over one plus tangent square theta, all to the power phi, multiplied by dx, which is two over phi, multiplied by tangent to the power 2 over 5 minus 1 theta multiplied by secant square theta d theta. We will take 2 over 5 outside the integral. It's a constant. We know that 1 plus tangent square theta is equal to secant square theta. Now here we have secant square theta all to the power 5 equals to secant to the power 2 phi of theta. Then we can here simplify this term and this term. We will get secant to the power 2 phi minus 2 of theta multiplied by tangent to the power 2 over phi minus 1 theta d theta. Now instead of tangent, we will put sine over cosine. And so i equals to 2 over phi this term multiplied by sine to the power 2 over 5 minus 1 of theta over cosine 2 over 2 over 5 minus 1 theta. So here's i. Then after simplification, we get here cosine of 2 phi minus 2 minus 2 over 5 plus 1 of theta d theta. So i becomes 2 over phi integral from 0 to pi over 2 sine 2 over phi minus 1 of theta multiplied by cosine 2 phi minus 2 over phi minus 1 of theta d theta. We know that the Euler beta integral equals 2 beta m n equals 2 integral from 0 to pi over 2 cosine 2 power n minus 1 theta multiplied by sine 2 power n minus 1 theta d theta. Now comparing these two integrals, we can write 2 m minus 1, the power of sine, equals to 2 over 5 minus 1. So minus 1 and minus 1 will be cancelled out. So 2 m equals to 2 over 5, m equals to 1 over 5, and so m will be 1 over 5. Similarly, for the power of cosine, 2m minus 1 equals to this term, 2 phi minus 2 over 5 minus 1. 
after simplification, we can write n equals to phi minus 1 over phi. So I becomes here 1 over phi multiplied by this term, which is equal to beta of m n. m is 1 over phi and n equals to phi minus 1 over phi. So we can write i 1 over phi beta of 1 over phi and phi minus 1 over phi. But beta of m n equals to gamma m multiplied by gamma n over gamma of m plus m. So i will be 1 over phi gamma of the first term, which is 1 over phi multiplied by gamma of the second term over gamma of its addition. So here we have gamma of 1 over phi plus phi minus 1 over phi. So we can write i equals to 1 over phi, the numerator over 2. Here we can cancel out 1 over phi and minus 1 over phi. So the denominator we have gamma of 1 or gamma of phi. We know that gamma of n plus 1 equals to n multiplied by gamma of n. So here we have 1 over phi multiplied by gamma of 1 over phi. And it's equal to gamma of this term plus 1, which is gamma of 1 plus 1 over phi. And so i equals to gamma of 1 plus 1 over phi multiplied by gamma of phi minus 1 over phi all over gamma of phi. But we know that for the golden ratio rule, we have phi squared equal to phi plus 1. Now dividing the whole equation by phi, you get 1 plus 1 over phi here equals to phi. And so phi minus 1 over phi equals to 1. So here we have, instead of phi minus 1 over phi, we will put 1. So we will get here gamma of 1. And 1 plus 1 over phi equals to phi. So from this term, we will get gamma of phi. Therefore, i equals to this term equals to gamma of phi. This term equals to gamma of 1. And this term is gamma of phi. Now we have gamma of phi and gamma of phi will cancel each other. Therefore, i equals to gamma of 1, which is 1. So from the first method, we will get this integral equals to 1. Now we will evaluate i using the second method. We will take the change of variable y equals to x to the power 5 over 1 plus x to the power 5. Here we have y equals function of x. We can find x in terms of y. And then after calculations, we can write x equals to y minus 1 minus y all to the power 1 over 5. We will use this a few moments later. Let's continue. y equals to x to the power 5 all over 1 plus x to the power 5. We can add up 1 and subtract 1 to get 1 plus x to the power 5 minus 1 in the numerator. Here we can divide 1 plus x to the power 5 by the denominator to get 1. And here we have minus 1 over 1 plus x to the power 5. OK, now we have x equals to function of y. Now dx will be derivative of this term multiplied by dy. Derivative of this term, we will put the power here next to that function. So we will have 1 over 5 multiplied by y over 1 minus y to this power minus 1 multiplied by the derivative of y over 1 minus y. So here we, we, we will use the power rule. Derivative of u power m equals to m multiplied by u power m minus 1 multiplied by u prime. So dx equals to this term multiplied by dy. Now for the new bounds, we have 
x equals to zero. So if x equals to zero, we will get y equals to zero over one plus zero, which is zero. And for the upper bound, x equals to infinity, then y equals to limit as x tends to infinity of this term, which is limit as x tends to infinity of x to the power of i over x to the power of i, which is one. Now we have to substitute. The new bounds are zero infinity. The old bounds are zero infinity. And also the new bounds are zero one. So here we can write new bounds from zero to one. Here, this term can be written as one over one plus x power five all to the power five. So here we have one plus x to the power five will be one minus y from this equality. So this term equals to one minus y all to the power five. And for dx, here's is dx. So one over five multiplied by this to the power one over five minus one multiplied by one over one minus y all squared dy. Now we have to simplify. So we will take one over phi outside the integral because it's a constant. And here we have y power one over phi minus one. And here we have one minus y to the power one over phi minus one. And here we have one minus y to the power minus two. So for the similar terms, we have one minus y to the power, here we have phi, and here we have minus one over phi plus one, and for y, we have y to the power, one over phi minus one. So i becomes one over phi, integral from zero to one, y power one over phi minus one, multiplied by one minus y to the power, phi power, or phi minus one over phi, plus one minus two, which is minus one. Then I becomes integral from zero to one of this term multiplied by one over five. This is the gamma function. So I becomes one over five or beta function, sorry. I equals to one over five multiplied by this term, which is beta m m, such that m equals one over five. And here we have n equals to phi minus one over phi. Remark that beta m n equals to integral from zero to one of y power m minus one multiplied by one minus y power n minus one d one. So we can write i equals to one over phi multiplied by beta of one over phi and phi minus one over phi. So similarly for the first method here we have similar to this calculations we will get i equals to one over phi gamma of m multiplied by gamma of n over gamma of n plus one then after simplification as the first method we will get i equals to one for the third method we have to find a function which is a primitive of this term, a primitive of one over one plus x to the power phi, all power phi. So consider the function of x equals to x multiplied by one plus x to the power phi, all to the power one minus phi. Let's take the derivative of f. We have df over dx equals to d over dx of this function. Then here we have u multiplied by v. So the derivative of u multiplied by v is u prime v plus v prime u. u prime is one multiplied by v, this whole term, one plus x to the power phi, all to the power one minus phi, plus v prime u. Okay, this is u, and now for v prime. v prime is one minus phi, multiplied by this term to the power, this power minus one, which is minus phi, multiplied by the derivative of this term, which is v prime, which is phi multiplied by x to the power phi minus one. So here we have one plus x to the power phi, all to the power minus phi can be taken as a common factor. Then here we have 
1 plus x to the power 5 all to the power 1 will be remain. Plus, here we have 1 minus 5 multiplied by 5 here, which is 5 minus 5 squared. And here we have x multiplied by x is a common. But we know that phi squared minus 1 equals to 1. So phi minus phi squared equals 2 minus 1. So here we will put minus 1. And then the derivative equals to 1 plus x to the power phi power minus phi. Here we have 1 plus x power phi. And here we have minus x squared or minus x power phi. So f prime equals to 1 plus x to the power 5 to the power minus 5. So here we can cancel out x power 5 and minus x power 5 to get f prime of x equals to 1 plus x to the power 5 all to the power minus 5. And this can be written as 1 over x to the power 5 all to the power 5 and equals to 1 over 1 plus x to the power 5 all power five. So the derivative of f prime is this function. And so we can say that i equals to integral from zero to infinity of this function dx, which is integral of f prime dx, which is f from zero to plus infinity. So here we have i equals to limit at infinity of this term minus f of zero. f of zero equals to zero. And so I will be limit as x tends to plus infinity of this term by performing this limit, it will be one. Therefore, this integral, integral from zero to plus infinity of dx all over one plus x to the power five all to the power five equals one by using three different methods. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.